finding glass sponges can be particularly tough. I did all of the groundwork with no government funding whatsoever. The first time I did this, uh, I was only curious about what was on the top of the seamount. And this is how the discoveries were, there, were made for the deeper sponge reefs. We're about to do something that's going to be fairly complex, fairly serious. Our planned dive is 220 feet. Some things go wrong, we need safe divers in the water within minutes. You guys' heads got to be in the game, right? Sponge reefs were once found throughout the world's oceans. Now we're left with a remnant. None of us knew that there were glass sponge reefs in Howe Sound. The fact that they've survived on this earth for so terribly long should make us all interested in them. And are they going to make it? so far away from answering any kinds of questions. As it stands right now, there's eight sites that are protected. But there's actually 17 sites we've discovered so far. The only people that have dove in these deeper areas is Hamish's team. Things go very wrong the deeper you go. And that's where fatalities can happen. As citizen scientists, we should be exploring to try to help bring awareness to these animals. These animals exist and they need that level of protection. This is something special, and it's in our own backyard. Every single reef, we see signs of damage. Putting words on paper and uh, putting lines on a map only does so much. It's really valuable when members of the community want to contribute to science. There's an estimated 90% of species we have yet to even discover in the oceans. There's so many unknowns still. If we don't actually document these sites, we can't protect them. I mean, they're just screaming for protection. If this was a coral reef out there, there would have been no hesitation about closing it. They may disappear before we learn much more about them. <laughs>